Um, how about new inventory that we've got? Let's there? hear it. How about the 1969 Plymouth GTX hardtop? That thing is cool. Jamaica blue over black. Yeah. Um, 440 with an A727 automatic. Um, got power windows, which is really hmm. rare for that mm -hmm. car. And this is really... You know, it's a muscle car. It's it's like at the height of muscle cars. 1969, 440. The automatic, you might argue that, you know, you would have preferred a four-speed. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the Plim uh, the Mopar products did have automatic. Yeah, a 727 was a popular transmission. A lot of the B-bodies had, yeah. had automatics. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's okay. Uh, you know, listen. Mm -hmm. You drive a car with a 411 rear end with an auto, with a manual transmission, and fourth gear is going to be about three too light. Yeah, <laughs> you really would like to pretty, have about seven. Much. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and with an automatic, though, you don't have that. That it still, you know, once it gets up to a certain speed, it's only going to go so far or so fast. Everybody knows uh, Chargers and and Roadrunners, but GTX is something <laughs> something cool about they're that. They're kind of they're kind of the outlier. Yeah, exactly. Of the Mopar body stuff. People don't always know what they are. They recognize the style, mm -hmm. the look, and the usually the color mm -hmm. uh, that. Jamaica blue, uh, but, but not always. They don't always, you know, know the what it exactly is that they're looking at. Um, how about the 1948 Cadillac convertible, light iris pearl over gray? This thing is stunning. Mm -hmm. This is the Sh amount of should money. be over there in the AACA display. Yeah. Well, except it's, it's it's shattered, covered, smothered, and chunked. <laughs> it's uh, French <laughs> French smooth shaved, a 5.7 liter LT1 V8, uh, 700 R4 automatic, uh, fat man front end, and four wheel mm -hmm. power disc brakes. And, of course, it's a two-door Series 62 convertible, which is a pretty interesting car uh, in and of its own self. And somebody took some liberties with it, and, you know, that's okay. Uh, you know, when you when you do some shaving and Frenching and customizing and... There's all, there's all different things that, that those mean. Like you know, you when you eliminate the door handles, when you recess things, when you chop the top, chop the chop, you you take the bumpers off and and you know smooth those. Mm -hmm. and there's taking off chrome pieces and and all that are all those terminology that you hear people talking about when they're talking about uh, customs and hot rods from the day. Even though there's. It's very customized. There's always going to be a second person who Absolutely. likes likes what they did to it. Yep, exactly. More than two people. More than two people. Mm -hmm. That's like over customizing your home. You don't always. You, mm -hmm. That's what have to be have to be very careful when you customize a car to make it at least somewhat uh, universally liked. And not that people don't like it, but will a, another guy actually pay you money for it? Because at some point in time, as Mike Hutchison said. We are just stewards, right. not stewards, of these cars, mm -hmm. and therefore they're going to go to somebody else someday. And you got to make sure that you know maybe you you make it so nobody else wants it. And I don't think that's ever been happened. Have we ever had a car that we couldn't sell? Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> well a, a few, but we might have a few here and there. But most cars, there is usually a butt for every seat. That's but there right. has to be two butts for every seat if you build something, and then you got to sell it to somebody else, right? That's right. So uh, other new inventory: '65 Mustang mm -hmm. GT, Rangoon red over red and white, uh, correct 289 V8 four barrel, uh, correct C4 automatic, got the pony interior, uh, dealer installed air conditioning. These things, I don't know, a fastback Mustang. Does it get any cooler? And of course, we were talking about the Hertz one that we have right, too, right. Uh, the black and gold one that we have. That's a replica. I mean, Mustang fastbacks. If you were in the know back in the day, you bought a fastback. But most people didn't really know they existed. Right. I never saw one growing up. Mm -hmm. You would see a convertible. You would see a little notchback. I don't know. I don't remember ever seeing a fastback Mustang growing up in East Tennessee. Of course, you know, <laughs> we weren't terribly hip to begin with. So. Well. <laughs> I grew up around here, and I don't remember seeing one either. Yeah, I mean, you just didn't see them. I didn't really know much about them mm -hmm. or, or their existence. And, uh, and of course, then you find out that uh, they sold quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. so, uh, well, you got B-bodies on this list, and you got Fastback Mustangs. You can't go wrong. Can't go wrong two there. iconic shaped cars. How about the 1938 Studebaker mm. cab over? Mm -hmm. Mustard yellow over black <laughs> and gray. Oh, my God, this thing. We need to make room for that one. <laughs> yes, we did. Took him 19 years wow. to build this thing. <laughs> I mean, that's dedication. It shows. There's, it's a beautiful. It's a beautiful. I've truck. never. I haven't even. Well, I take that back. Kathy and I've been together for over 19 years, but there's not many things <laughs> in my life that I've done except take air right. uh, for 19 years. Yeah. And this guy spent 19 years building this. Multiple AACA wins. It's almost, almost flawless. I mean, you almost have to trailer it to car shows. And it's so, so big to trailer, you're going to have to have right. a low boy. That's what I mean. You know, <laughs> you a, definitely. A special customized mm -hmm. trailer to get it there. I mean, it it's, is beautiful. It is. But it's one of those things that it's a very niche market. It's mm -hmm. going to be very specialized to the person that... The biggest problem that you run into with guys who collect vehicles is size. 
Yeah. You know, I would love to have that fire truck, mm-hmm. but I don't have the space for it. Right. I can't fit it in my garage. Uh, that's the same thing with this. It, it, I, I, the number, uh, number one question we get from buyers that aren't physically at our place is, how long is the car? How wide is the car? How tall is the car? You know, what are the specs and the dimensions of the car? Because it may not fit in my garage, and if it doesn't, I can't buy it. There's three things that stop a, somebody from making mm-hmm. a purchase at Classic Auto Mall. Space, funds, and, and wife. wife. <laughs> no, wife. <laughs> and of course, you know, it's, it's funny when you talk to uh, guys about that. A uh, guy said to me the other day, he said, uh, he said, yeah, he said, my wife won't let me uh, have that. I said, I used to have a wife like that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that thing. And I'm not condoning hey, any, no. you know, divorce or anything like that. Come on, don't. No letters, please. Anyway, we uh, this 38 Studebaker, if you get a chance, come see it. It's just an amazing, amazing mm-hmm. truck and, uh, you know, way ahead of its time for back in the era. So, uh, Also, the 1977 Chevrolet Monza Coupe. Have you seen this? Thing? Uh, yeah, no, I did a video on it. Yeah, it's incredible. It's amazing. Brown metallic over light buckskin, 79,000 actual miles, very stock example, uh, rust free. Listen to the motor 145 horsepower, 305 <laughs> cubic inch V8 with a turbo hydromatic 200. <laughs> Not a 350 wow. or a 400. Yeah. Or any of that. No, it's can't, the turbo hydromatic 200. Can't get out of its own way. Although 145 is not bad. I mean, Trans Am, like, you know, <laughs> 175, 75, 165. Yeah, so we're talking its way. I think the lowest horsepower. Corvette at one year was 165, like in seven okay. or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, L79 automatic California edition. Oh, sure. 165 horsepower, which, you know, I, I mean, my garden tractor. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then, of course, the 2017 Chevrolet Corvette Grand Sport. And its brother is right here beside it. Sure it's 2017 yeah. yep. uh, as well, too. This 2017 Grand Sport 2LT, Arctic White over Adrenaline Red, two owners, 12,000 original miles, 460 horsepower V8, uh, active handling and magnetic ride control. Mm, mm. I don't really know what that means, but it sounds cool. Uh, it's a, <laughs> Yeah, it's a suspension thing. Yeah, but what did magnets have to do with it? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I need you to know these podcast at classicautomall.com. Yeah, yeah, it does that. JR is doing something yeah. with his hand. Yeah, if, and if you're just watching, you're not. Li- you're only <laughs> listening. You won't know what JR is doing, uh, but we know because we're here and we're cool. And- well, we have every flavor Grand Sport right now. We have two 2017 Corvettes. One is modified with a stick shift. Right. That's this one behind us at the auto show, and then this this beautiful white one that's automatic with twelve thousand miles. Yeah. And black wheels. It's awesome. And I tell you, th- this generation, the pre C. What is it now? The new ones are C8? C8, yeah. Yep. The C7s are like mm-hmm. through the roof pricing wise. The Z06s and the ZR1s are just, I mean, they're just, yep. they're, they're bringing huge 200,000 plus at some car shows. Mm-hmm. Just amazing. So. You've been listening to the Classic Auto Mall podcast with your host, Stuart Howden.